I'm Kate. And I'm Cameron. And we've been married for three years. We are the proud owners of a cat named Whiskey. When we got Whiskey, I had no idea what I was in for. Whiskey poops all around our house. He is pooping. It's very random. He just pooped on the stairs. There's some more right there. On top of the dining room table, under the dining room table. In the living room. Laying in our laps. He pooped right in between my legs. I was disgusted. Nothing is sacred. Hi. Hey, how are you? I'm Kate. Hey, Kate, I'm Jackson. Hi. Hey, Come Cameron. Hey, Cameron. Good to meet you, man. Nice to meet you, too. How are you guys? We're good. So, what brings me to Texas? We have a cat that poops all around our house. Okay. He'll usually stop for a second, position, poop, and then just take off. He'll do it while he's running? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anywhere but the litter box. Mm -hmm. Dining room table, dining room. Well, yep. so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and that, I know, and that's the sad thing, right? He'll do it and run, and that's what those scratches yeah. are. What did the vet say? Um, they haven't been able to figure it out so far. We've done- No uh, theories, no nothing? No, you hope that it's not pain. Now I haven't met Whiskey yet, but when a cat poops and runs at the same time, now that tells me this cat could be in pain, and that concerns me. I tend to feel like I'm the one that picks it up more in general. We even stated the not it game. The not it game. Not yeah. it game, yeah. Not it, no. I called it. I can't deal with this. I hate picking it up. It smells, it's disgusting. There's resentment underneath. She's sick of picking it up. The stress involved of cleaning up after this cat for this long, it's gotta be bad in there. We mm -hmm. um, would like to start a family and to have a cat that does that with a pregnant woman or a child that will be down on the floor is just not an option. Right. What if I didn't come over here today? Whiskey would have to be confined to a single room. You really don't have any time to waste on this, so let's get moving. Okay. Come on, guys. Yeah. When Kate and Cameron told me that they're going to start planning a family and they're going to keep Whiskey confined to a room if he's not fixed, the stakes went through the roof because that's no life for a cat. What do I need to know in here? He'll typically poop anywhere in this space. There might be poop under the couches. And down here. Oh, there it is. Uh, Cameron, can you just uh, yep. move the chair for me here? I just. Yeah. There it is. Poop will get like kind of flung under there flung. from him kind of like moving and doing his running thing. Almost hollow. Did you see this? It is. Yeah. Poop of the consistency that it sort of bounces like marbles under a couch should be sending up red flags. You're telling me the vet looks at this and says this is normal? And we haven't gotten any information from them about that something is wrong with him. Are you kidding me? A clean bill of health with what's coming out of him? I have never wanted a second opinion more than I want one right now. Occasionally, there's some blood around it, so uh, to me- Why wouldn't there be blood around? Think about this. If, if this came out of one of us, it would hurt. Exactly. I started to feel really sad for Whiskey, um, that knowing that he was in that much pain. So what do we have left to see? Bedroom. Bedroom's next. All right, mm -hmm. now let's take a, a break real fast. You're gonna show me that? I'm gonna wash my hands real okay. fast, okay? So, bedroom. The fact that he still leaves deposits everywhere leads yeah. me downstairs again. Cameron, can you move the bed? Look at that. <gasps> Did you have any idea that this was back here? I did, yes. Have you given up? Yeah. It was incredibly embarrassing to have all of that poop shown under the bed. It's time uh, to give you some early homework. Kate needs a vacation from Poop Patrol. Guess what, Cameron? You're it. So are you happy knowing that I'm going to be picking up more cat poop? I'm very happy. Very happy. Good. I need to find Whiskey. Where's he at? He is probably in here hiding somewhere. I knew that Whiskey was hanging out in the bedroom, so I sent Cameron and Kate out. I got a toy. Hi. Whiskey, my love. Can I get you to play with me? My first impression, the cat's timid. If Whiskey does indeed have a medical condition, this will affect his behavior. I need him to come out from under the bed so I can see what I'm dealing with here. Hi, bud. What are you doing? Come here, my baby boy. 
Hi, mister. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. You're adorable. Yes, you are, you're adorable. Whiskey came out from hiding, and not only that, he settled into my touch beautifully. He really responded to cheek and neck touching. Matter of fact, as soon as I scratched him under his chin, instapur. Now that tells me that Whiskey's a friendly cat, but he's in pain, and that keeps him from being the happy, healthy cat I want him to be. That was fun. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna have a second opinion done. I know that we're not dealing with territory problems or, or dominance issues or anything like that. This is a cat that's been in pain for years, and we have to relieve that pain, get another opinion, get an ultrasound done, a full blood workup, and make sure we know what's going on in this body. Now, this is the second part of the homework here, nutritionally. Right? You're going to switch to a wet diet, OK? OK. That dry food, that's what it looks like coming out. If he has wet going in, it's going to be a little better uh, quality coming out. If he feels better, he will act appropriately, and hopefully he's using a litter box, but it's gonna take time for sure. So in the meantime, Cameron, you're it. You are the guy picking up the poop. Cameron's gonna start picking up more of the cat poop. Poop duty. All of the cat poop. Lots of poop duty. All right, guys, that's it. I'm gonna leave. Thank you. It was great to meet you. Thank you, it was good and to you meet too, you. Thank you, man. Thank you so much. Take care. I would be really sad if um, the homework doesn't end up working. I don't know if I can deal with Whiskey not being a part of our lives. All right, I'm back in Austin. I'm outside Kate and Cameron's house for my second visit with them and their cat, Whiskey. Well, hey, sir. How's it going? How you doing, man? Good to see you again. Good Come to on see in. you, too. So, guys, tell me. How's Whiskey? Is he pooping in the box? No. He's still pooping in a lot of other places. Out and about. The good news is he's uh, not pooping under the bed. Great. We're not seeing poop there anymore. Wait, wait, stop there. <laughs> That's good news. <laughs> now, now That's stay. good news. Now we stay. like okay. that, OK? Right. Under the bed was a nightmare. So that's done. Tell me, what from the homework from last time has worked for you? The wet food was better, and his poop was a little bit softer. And the result is better poop. Mixing in wet food has definitely been what we needed to do. He loves it. Did you guys get to the vet? We did. Yeah. Talk to me. They did an ultrasound. And we're seeing some mildly enlarged lymph nodes along the colon. They said that they can't get a good enough sample unless they do surgery. And they wanted <sighs> to cut him open and do a full biopsy that way. I'm terrified of surgery. I think that when we're dealing with what could be irritable bowel disease, uh, the last thing I would want is exploratory surgery. I'm not a vet. That's just my gut feeling. All right, guys, I don't want to waste time. We got a lot of work to do here. Let's walk around the house. Okay. Sounds Come good. On, let's go. Take you in. And we have a whiskey. Come here, my man. Come here, my man. I like not having to dig him out from under the bed. And he seems to me to be quite all right. We put him on a different food, and suddenly he's like, oh my god, I feel better. Now, I'm not a vet. I just don't like the idea of exploratory surgery at this point. I'm gonna bring in a friend of mine who's a vet. I'm gonna get another opinion. Hold on one second, I got something for you, okay? Okay. So, let's start with litter. I've given you examples of a whole bunch of different types of litters. We've got a clay blend, we've got a walnut based, we've got sand. Try to figure out what he's attracted to. I know Whiskey isn't ready to poop in the box yet until his medical issues are resolved, but when he is ready, we have to provide him with the right environment. And we're gonna let Whiskey tell us what kind of litter he likes. I wanna go pretty much completely holistic right now. One example here is flower essence therapy. This is uh, my stuff, it's called Spirit Essences. This goes on his food, in his water. This is just a natural holistic way to bring down stress. All right, guys, we got a lot of work ahead of us, but it was great to be with you guys. Yes, oh, thank you, thank hang you. Hang in there, hang in there, right? Thank you. All right, I'm here for my final visit with Kate and Cameron and their cat, Whiskey. Part of their whole work was to get Whiskey a second opinion with a vet I recommended. So before I go to Kate and Cameron's house, I'm gonna stop by Dr. Spitz's office first to hear his diagnosis. Dr. Spitz, how are you, man? I'm well, good to see you. So, let's talk about Whiskey. Whiskey is in pain. His uh, ultrasound shows a inflammation that parallels that colon. The diagnosis is a colitis. 
Is, is colitis fall in that world of, of IBD, irritable bowel disease? Yeah, it does. Yes. Okay. Dr. Spitz's diagnosis is that whiskey has IBD, or irritable bowel disease, which is an inflammatory condition that can be incredibly painful if left unmanaged. So this explains why whiskey runs when he poops and can't manage to use the litter box. It's about the pain. So with that, we can go with a treatment plan and see his response. That would be great. And go from there. What are we looking at where we can say, all right, he's getting better, or no, we got to go into something else? I think that you should give me about two weeks. We should notice something. Good. Great to see you, man. Oh, likewise. All right. I'll talk to you soon. Uh-huh. Bye-bye. Hey, guys. Hey. hey. How are you? Good. Good How to are see you? you. Good to see you. Cameron, good to see Sorry. you, brother. So, guys, I've been thinking about you a lot. You've been spending some time with Dr. Spitz. How did that feel for you guys to hear that, that news? It is the first time that we've had forward progress. Ah, good. <laughs> we know that there's a medical condition now that we're treating. So that really is the part that's giving us the most hope. So we have meds. We have a liquid that you're supposed to use a syringe to put in his mouth. That's been painful. Um, painful. Painful for me. Um, oh, uh, you happened? know, a few claws in the hands. He clawed Cameron really bad. It was a big fiasco. We're supposed to administer a B12 shot. Um, we really don't feel comfortable pushing a needle in him. If Kate and Cameron can't administer the meds, Whiskey doesn't have a chance. So let's head inside and check everything out. Come on, I gotta make sure that they have it down, Pat, before I leave today. Here's the thing I can tell you about vitamin B12. Uh, it doesn't really sting that much. We don't have to worry about it. The other thing is the needle itself. Not that big a deal, OK? I'm pretty scared to do the injection shot because neither one of us have injected an animal with a needle like that before. Not sure how it's going to go. So you want to make sure that as you put it in, your hand is right there, right? You're ready to go. You try okay. that. Oh, wait, I'm going to do it? Yeah. Let's get to it. Go ahead and grab him. Okay. What you want to do with Whiskey is first get him into a really secure position. Then you're going to take the scruff of his neck and pull it up a little bit. You're going to make sort of a tent with the skin in the back. And then the needle comes in. If Kate hesitates or puts the needle in halfway and doesn't fully administer the shot, well, then Whiskey doesn't get his meds. He'll be even more traumatized than he is right now. That's the last thing we need. So here's what we're going to do. First thing, I'm going to create the tent here, and you're going to give him a shot. I'm terrified, but I just kind of thought in my mind, you're helping him. All right, right in there. And make sure you're under the skin. Wow, look at you go, girl. Boom, parallel to the spine, shot goes in. Whiskey never knew it hit him. It was over. She did an amazing job. OK, your turn, buddy. Come on in. Now it's Cameron's turn to give the oral medications. I'm going to scruff here. There we go. We get every drop in. It gets resolved. He comes back with that look on his face like, yeah, I got it. It's all taken care of now. Boom. Yay. Boom. See, guys? Very nice. Very nice. The success here is that we know he is not going to be in pain anymore. To be able to leave him knowing that in a couple weeks' time, it's going to be over. When he uses that box, I want you right there with a the camera. OK. Because I got to see that stuff, <laughs> all right? Will. Now, I am going to leave you guys. It has been an amazing experience. I can't even tell Us you. Us too. All right. Thank you so much. Now take care. I think today was absolutely a success. A huge success. Please let me know what's going on, all right? Yes. All right. All right, bye-bye. See you, Jackson. Bye. I see a really good future for whiskey and for us.